I'm only doing this for documentation purposes. Uh, there's really no point in, you know, laying out the facts other than documentation purposes, other than people to, other than for people to be able to identify when they hear talking points like Candace Owens' recent um, clip, and it was also something about the the woke community and the LGBT community on the second half. But the first half of the video, and this is on the Daily Wire, uh, she's just basically ripping into the black community and, you know, highlighting that, you know, the biggest problem is the, you know, the fatherless homes and fathers not being in the home and, you know, we don't have appropriate family structures. And so therefore, uh, you know, racism isn't what's holding us back. And then she throws in, uh, you know, a whole bunch of dog whistles, uh, you know, basically, you know, attacking Black Lives Matter um, and, you know, saying that, you know, everything is because of the welfare state and government handouts. Um, and, you know, th you know, the same typical, you know, talking points, you know, a couple of things that, that it's not even a matter of finding interesting, but it's like I'm like this chick already got gobbled up by Cornell West when she had that interview with Cornell West uh, and Gavin McGinnis, who is the founder of the Proud Boys and Vice News, surprisingly. But anyway, um, you know, her and Gavin McGinnis, and I said this before, they sat right up there and talked about how, you know, they're, they're these Christians and, you know, we need more traditional family structures and we need to get back to that, like as though having those type of family structures is just simply based off of an idea and, <clears throat> and an idea alone. Right. You know, what what is, you know, people often throw at me, you know, the the, the hardcore Christians, they'll often throw is throw at me as an atheist. The well, faith without works is, is dead. But yet they completely ignore that. And then they'll argue that it's the mindset and that the, the ideas and concepts of Christianity alone, like this, like this template, this Christian, you know, framework, you know, that the Bible lays forth uh, is possible, but they completely ignore the resource component, meaning men being gainfully employed. You know, all, all that is in the Bible could easily be followed, the whole traditional structure, if you have a breadwinning father in the home. If you don't have a breadwinning father, you're not going to have that situation. You're not even going to have relationships, as we can see with the 63% of young men, you know, not being married and, you know, the, you know, the way that the economy, you know, has gone and deindustrialization and manufacturing, leaving the, com uh, the country and NAFTA and jobs going overseas and all that shit, which she completely leaves out when talking about the black community. And and then again also leaves out all the policies that I keep reiterating and talking about the redlining, blockbusting, Jim Crow, eminent domain, urban renewal, convict leasing, debt peonage, Cointel Pro, Iran Contras dumping drugs in the black community, you know, the purging of black communities, uh, you know, with Tulsa, Elaine, Arkansas, Rosewood, Florida, Ocoee, Florida, uh, Slocum, Texas, East St. Louis, Missouri, Corbin, Texas, Corbin, Kentucky, where they ran all the black people out of Corbin, you know, you know, Red Summer, Chicago, 1919. Every time black people try to establish, you know, and have their own and whatnot, here you got white people come in there, finding any reason whatsoever to come in and burn the black community down. Like they just come in there and just burn it down. And then black people got to start over, like hit the, it's like hitting the reset button on the black community multiple times. And somehow that doesn't have effect on the conditions of, you know, today's black community and the arguably, you know, the pathologies that people want to see. Like if, again, if you don't, if you, it's just like the shit, like, Again, if I, let's talk about white male mass shooters. Like, why are they shooting the school up? Why Why do we see all this stuff with, you know, young white men uh, joining extremist groups, joining militias, joining, you know, wanting to be, you know, uh, Vikings and all this other shit, anti-government, you know, type. Why do they join it? Because they're looking for a positive male identity, which they don't have if, they, if they're not gainfully employed and they can't provide for a family, therefore they can't date, they can't you know, purchase a home. They can't do any of the tenants that, you know, Candace Owens would talk about when she's talking about Christianity. 
And so, and so, you know, they fall into despair. They fall into, you know, what we see with the disproportionate numbers of white male self deletion. You know, they fall into all of that, right? But there's, there's, there's a situation that precedes, you know, where white men are right now today. It's not like that shit just magically appeared out of the ether. I wouldn't dare say that, but whenever it comes to the black community, or specifically whenever it comes to black males, they always want to go, oh, well, they're just like that. You know, even when it comes to the, um, you know, the, 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 the crime, you know, the, the black violence, you know, the, the, the inner city violence, the gang violence, right? And she ties it back to get yeah, fathers not being in the home. Yeah, that's great. You want to tie it back to fathers not being in the home and not having a family structure. But if you're not going to talk about men being gainfully employed, see, like, again, it, it, what she's trying to what she's trying to get everybody to believe is that there's something culturally innately wrong with black people as opposed to black people actually being economically disadvantaged, you know, for the for, you know, uh, pretty much all of American uh, existence. And, but somehow when we get to white men and they become economically disadvantaged and then they start, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, operating and functioning in ways in which people would call pathological or negative to society, then then all then then we bring out the psychologist. Then we start analyzing, oh, well, it was due to this happened and that happened, you know, just like what you saw with like, uh, you know, the uh, who was it? The the uh, what the hell was it the 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 guy timothy mcveigh and the unabomber and all that shit and how that spawned out of you know the the guys that came back from vietnam and unlike the world war ii veterans they were shit on they were called baby killers and all the other stuff the government abandoned them world war ii veterans came back from world war ii and they got houses they got levitt towns they were subsidized by the government fha loans there were jobs all over the place because again europe was bombed the hell japan was bombed the hell you know freaking the rest of the world was not developed they it, it, like the bridge in trenton says we make what the world takes and that that hap that that you know went on you know for you know the, the next you know 25 years you know what i'm saying like so uh, you know up until the 70s and then you had opec and you had all that other stuff like the, the the middle class all this shit that that white americans all these people that talk about you know the trump shit and we want to make america great again all of that is rooted in that era they want to go back to their childhood of the silent generation that got all that and everything. And, 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 and people, you know, there was a there was a, a, a healthy, you know, middle class majority made up of white people. That's what it was. You know, but now the corporations, they don't they're, they're messing around and, you know, jobs going overseas. They're trying to cut costs. They can move around the world and the globe looking for cheap labor as much as they want to. Now they're trying to withdraw out of China. They're going they're looking at places like you know, uh, like Mexico building factories right across the border. Just Google the shit. Type in type in manufacturing in Mexico, and 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 man, and Mexico is basically advertising like, hey, we're your cheap labor, which also speaks to this whole this whole thing with the you know the black uh uh you know family or group getting killed in Mexico, and now the U.S. government doesn't care about black people, but you know they're they're looking for a reason that between them and Mitt Romney's you know, people, the Mormons and stuff like that, like, they're like, oh, we need to call the cartels a terrorist organization, because especially if we're going to take, you know, uh, everything out of China, and, and because we got beef with China, because China's a one-party state, and Xi Jinping, if he gets a hair in the crack of his ass, he just waves his magic wand, and then all of a sudden, you know, three billion dollars, you know, whatever billions of dollars are invested in, you know, whatever some company wants to do in China is now flushed down the toilet. That's why America likes dealing with democracies because democracies are slow. Democracies, you know, you 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 got to have, you know, politicians and lobbyists and then they can go to the other country and be like, hey, remember our deal? You know, we gave you this. So you got to vote this way to make sure this doesn't happen. You know, you can finesse in a democracy. You can't finesse in a one party state. So now the U.S. is trying to pull, you know, all the corporations are trying to pull out. They want to go to Vietnam. They want to go to Mexico, you know, and all these other places. And, you know, they got to get rid of the cartels because, you know, the cartels are bad for business, especially when you're operating your businesses right on the border town and you got cartels coming through there trying to bring drugs into, you know, the United States. You know, so why did I bring it up? There's a reason why I brought that up. 
Um, but, uh, you know, just speaking on, you know, why we have this, you know, imploding, you know, middle class now. And see, so the thing, the same things that were affecting the black community are now affecting the white community. And, 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 you know, there's plenty of videos of a bunch of young, angry white men that are, that are literally like they're filing the same complaints that black men have been filing. But the thing is, is that the rhetoric coming from the far right and the conservative camp and all that, you know, all, all that personal responsibility, pull yourselves up by the bootstraps. You can't personally responsibility your way out of corporations taking jobs overseas because, you know, the way that the politics work in America, they serve business interest and the capitalist interest and not the and not the interest of the people. And you get the people all caught up on emotional bullshit. Right. You know, whether it's um, uh, racism or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, religion or all, all of these things that, that invoke strong feelings, gun control. That's another one. All these things that invoke strong feelings. You get people to vote on the basis of that and not vote on the basis of their economic interest. If Americans wanted unions, they could have unions overnight, but all the races would have to come together and vote in a particular way. But, you know, what Candace Owens does, what Fox News does, you know, uh, you know, is 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 divisive. You know what I'm saying? And in, with MSNBC, like people say, well, what about MSNBC? Yeah, I don't get all the freaking gay shit. If you ask me, all the gay shit is basically to water down, you know, the black empowerment movement. Because if America owes anybody, it owes black people. There's 40 million black people. Gay people are like 3% of the population. You know, you know, many of them are white. So if anything were to be done, it would still benefit the white community. It's just like how, you know, the biggest beneficiaries of affirmative action are white women. And then the next biggest beneficiaries of freaking affirmative action are black women because they, 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 you know, uh, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. Not only is she a female, she's black. So voila. So fuck the black males. We don't care about them. Right. Even though we all know that the, you know, the men are the ones that, you know, build and maintain the physical infrastructure of a community. The other thing that Candace Owens does in her video is she brings up the Asian community and she talks about the Asian community and how they have intact families, you know, but the black community doesn't. Like, look at the Asian community. Like, they're a minority group, right? And what's so funny about that is, and this is what conservatives like to do all the time with this model minority bullshit, is like, so so they'll, they'll in, one, in one instance, they'll sit there and say, well, look at the Asians and they have intact families, like what Candace did, right? Right. Completely ignoring that in another conversation, they'll bring up how there is no racism because Asians have the highest, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you want to call it? And, you know, household income. Right. Which is like one hundred thousand dollars because they have small businesses. But then going over to uh, the video that, uh, um, you know, Phil Scott, you know, posted in Black, the Black Diaspora News. He's got a clip of some Asian woman on TikTok who basically, you know, just spilled the beans, which we already knew. But I'm saying, you know, she said why uh, Asian businesses are able to function or why they function in black communities, because when Asian people came here, white people didn't want them functioning in their communities. So the Asian people, like black people, were redlined out of opening businesses in the white communities because the white white folks weren't going to allow Asian people to get rich off of them and vacuum money out of their community. So they gave the bank loans that they didn't give African-Americans to establish their own businesses to Asian businesses and other foreigners that come and show up, which only further contributes to the very uh, issue that Candace Owens is bitching and complaining about when it comes to, you know, the black community and broken homes and, uh, uh, you know, the violence and the gangs and the crime and whatnot, because, you know, that's what's going to happen when you have a whole bunch of you know, a uh, uh, fatherless, economically marginalized black men. That is what's going to happen. They will cannibalize the community and every so often they will spill out of the community and then go and, and uh, uh, um, you know, victimize other people because survival does not wait for assimilation. You know, I had, a, I had some white guy I was arguing with you know, about that, you know, it's, he was like, oh, this is a hate crime, right? They they want to they wanna basic, they're doing like the, like the liberals do with gun control where they try to make all all gun violence, including self deletions, uh, they try to make that a part of like the mass shooting numbers, right? And they do all this freaking conflation. 
and and white people try to do the same thing. So basically any act of violence against white people, any crime, any robbery, any theft, any carjacking, any home invasion, they would try to make an economic crime a hate crime and then say, see, the, the, the white, black people are attacking white people, where, again, def the definition of a hate crime, you know, having that sort of animus or racial bias or whatever that's what white people do to black people. So there is no there is no two way street when it comes to that. You know, it's like it's like think white people are 56 percent of the perpetrators of all hate crimes. Black people are 23 percent of the perpetrators of all hate crimes. And white people are only 15 percent of 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 the victims of all hate crimes. And uh, uh, black people are what was the number? I think it was like 64 percent, 60 percent, something like that of of hate crimes that are based on that are based on uh, uh race you know i mean we top the charts you know uh, i mean even even jewish people are a distant second anti-asian is a drop in the bus like four percent you know and they don't have on the fbi website they don't have the you know the year for 2020 up yet because i want to see the numbers for that because i most certainly believe you know 2020 was the year of covid and i most certainly believe that their numbers went up and they might have jumped to like six percent seven percent you know but but they're still they still way trail behind black people as, a, as when it comes to being you know the targets of uh, uh you know uh racial violence like this shit with the dominicans and in, in freaking washington heights attacking the uh special needs kid he's autistic that video that they got of them beating up the three dominican people beating up the the black kid on the train, he's a special needs kid. He's a part of a group that rides the train and and uh, 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 because they like trains. I, I don't know what I don't know what programs they got for autistic kids in New York, but that's what he's a part of. Not a street dude, not a thug, none of that. But they're beating up on him. And we already know about the racism with Dominicans against black people and all that. And, you know, again, the white supremacy and how it's affected, you know, even all other minorities and, 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 and black being at the bottom and all this, you know, shitting on black people to try to get a pat on the head or some type of psychological acceptance from white people. It's disgusting. You know, but the funny thing is, like, even going back to talking about the Asians, they'll sit there and they'll bring up the Asians and they, like what Candace did and talk about how they got intact homes and but then not bring up the money. I'm like, when you're trying to slam black people and trying to deny racism, you'll say, oh, well, you know, Asian Asians have the highest GDP. If America was so racist, how do they have that? You know, and I'll tell you how they again, I, I explain how they have the businesses because they get the loans and black people don't even for their own communities. And then the other thing is, you know, when you look at the Asians, you know, we should see more Asians in leadership positions, but we don't see Asians in leadership positions. And this goes back to the self-defined term that Asians have come up, which is the bamboo ceiling, you know, where, as I've said before, white people will quickly, you know, they'll brag about Asians in the face of black people and talk about they're so smart and they get good grades and all this other shit. Right. But then when it comes to leadership positions, they'll start talking about how Asians, you know, they don't have leadership skills and leadership qualities, unlike us free spirited, you know, off the cuff, like Donald Trump, uh, you know, white males. You know, we got that covered. You know, Asians, you know, they're, they're, they're the bean counters. They can be the bean counters and we will pay them a lot of money to be the bean counters. But to run this corporation, all oh, hell no, which is why you don't see many uh, Asian Americans in prominent positions you know running running companies other than like the ones that like the guy that's in yahoo that started like yahoo and you know in silicon valley outside of that you don't see them you don't really you don't even see them you know outside of california you don't see asians in politics like that you know so <clears throat> um you know and this goes back to that that article that was written ghost of white people past where the Asians were excelling and they were doing so good. And the white people felt some type of way to the point that they had to move. They had to leave because at the end of the day, you got to understand that, that, that white people have a, 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 you know, as much as they, you know, America oh, is a melting pot and all this other bullshit. White people don't want to dance to anybody else's music. As soon as white people feel that they don't have the majority of the control or the majority of the say, white people roll the fuck out. They're not going to allow themselves to be like black people or any other minority where 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 they don't have final say. 
They don't get to go, you know, they, they want to be able to at all times change the radio station, however they see fit. That's how they function and that's how they operate. And Candace wants to come up in here and be this white apologist about all of that. You know, but I just find it funny how, you know, you know, it's always, you know, the Asian, oh, the Asians, they got their families intact. And you know what the funny thing, I'll bring up something else. You know, it's like, you know, Asians got their families are intact. And I'm like, if Candace wants to make it cultural, well, then you would have that implies that Asian culture is superior to white European American culture because Asian marriages are more intact and last longer than white European American, uh, you know, uh, um, marriages. But, you know, they'll always stop short of that. You know, then then to see if you if you were to say something like that or point something out like that, then the white people and the, uh, you know, the black white supremacists like Candace Owens, then they'll jump up and they'll be like, oh, well, you know, Asians, you know, they're they're communist and they have no emotions and all this other shit. You know what I mean? And they all look the same and you know, all this crap like you saw in freaking the movie 300, you know, with the immortals and what that represented, what they all had the golden mask on and shit like that. Yeah, all Asians look the same. I mean, that movie is so filled with racism and stereotypes and all that shit. You know, even the black guy with the, you know, he he backs up into the darkness and all you can see is his eyes and his teeth. I mean, the shit is just, it's just retarded. You know, but, um, you know, like, again, I've already said this a million times, you know, people like Candace Owens and the like, you know, they, they always want to act like, African American history started in 1985. Nothing came before that. Nothing, nothing preceded that. None of what happened before, you know. I mean, there's plenty of documentaries on YouTube where you can literally watch the documentary and see how these events, how these policies were put in place that crippled the black community that go way far beyond, you know, uh, 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 well, the welfare state. Notice how, like, they all, like, do do I disagree that welfare contributed to busting up the black? I don't disagree with that. But like, let's not just talk about the welfare state. Let's talk about redlining. Let's talk about blockbusting. Let's talk about eminent domain. Let's talk about where they, you know, where the government just comes in. Oh, we're going to take this land like they did Seneca Village in New York. Let's talk about uh, 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 urban renewal where they came in and bulldozed black communities and formed, you know, projects, uh, you know, as well as running highways through black business districts when black people had businesses that, you know, you know, if they still had those places, you might have black communities that look like Chinatown and have, uh, you know, corporate entities and therefore have young black men who are gainfully employed and hired and able to take care of their families and not out in the streets selling illegal narcotics, contributing to the opioid epidemic, which is killing massive numbers of white children. Like so it's like the movie Crash. It all comes back around. You know what I mean? I, I like the the way I feel about the shit now, you know, and I've said this, you know, before in a previous video, like like when I see white people getting fucked up or when I see white people bitching and complaining about the shit, I really don't care because whatever they receive from the black community, they contributed to that shit. They made that shit happen. Like 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 a white guy I know when when I broke all this shit down, sent him all type of links and videos, and he actually took the time and sat there and watched the shit. He the, his statement out of his own mouth. He said our grandparents need their asses beat. He's like, you mean to tell me that we got to deal with all this shit? You know, carjackings, you know, robberies, all the shit you see on the six o'clock news because y'all went in there and fucked up the black community. Y'all went in there and you bulldozed their businesses. You, you drove highways through their fucking main streets. You know what I mean? Then then you came in and you dumped drugs in their in their community, right? You 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 put them in in chain gangs and you know mass incarceration. All this shit. Always trying to criminalize. Always trying to bust up the home. Every time they tried to you know you know get a get a leg up. You know uh, you know advance themselves. You went in there and fucked it up. And now in 2023, we got to deal with, you know, Ray Ray and Pookie and street culture and all this other shit. And I got to be intimidated when I get out the car at the gas station and there's, you know, five, you know, 15 year old black males in a hoodie. Now I got to deal with that because you went in there and fucked up the black community. You know, and, and you know, as I was explaining, actually, I talked to him recently and I sent him the shit that the, the Cointel Pro. I put that on on the page uh, on the, one of my pages. I put them. I think it was I put on the my my uh, 
my gun channel. But anyway, I put up the Cointel Pro and read through the Cointel Pro. This is the FBI. This is the this is the U.S. government. What the U.S. government did. Let's read through Cointel Pro. Intended effects of Cointel Pro. This is the FBI. This is the U.S. government. And got Candace Owens up there saying, "Oh no, the, 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 you you know, the, the, the America hasn't done anything to black people. Racism is not a thing. It's a figment of the of the imagination." Intended effects of COINTELPRO, the intended effect of FBI's COINTELPRO was to expose, disrupt, misdirect, or otherwise neutralize groups that the FBI officials believed were subversive by instructing FBI field operatives to, one, create a negative public image for target groups, for example, through surveilling activists, and then realize, releasing negative personal information to the public. That's where you get your uh, Martin Luther King was cheating on Loretta Scott King. Okay. The number two, break down internal organization by creating conflicts. For example, by having agents exacerbate racial tension or send uh, anonymous letters to try to create conflicts, artificially creating conflicts that did, that do not exist and did not exist between black people or any other group artificially create that shit. Um, number three, create a uh, distinction between groups, for example, by spreading rumors that other groups were stealing money. So like, you know, you got person, okay, who's going to be the, the treasurer? Oh, and then next thing you know, you, you spread around rumors that somebody is stealing money in the organization. Number four, restrict access to public resources, for example, by pressuring nonprofit organizations, you know, to cut off funding uh, uh, or uh, material support. Right. And this is what they did. to I forget what that woman's name, the white woman who um, she was an actress and she supported the Black Panthers. And then they like basically spread a bunch of rumors about her. And then I think ultimately she uh, uh, deleted herself. Um I'm not 100% sure on that story. I forget. What, what is her name? I can't think of. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, white actress who supported Black Panthers. I know she's got like a unique name. I can't think. Jean Seberg. So Jean Seberg. And did she. Let me see. 1979 is when she passed or when she died. But what did she. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Cause of death real quick, because I don't want to put out misinformation. They actually have on the on the Wikipedia page. They actually have director of the FBI and how, you know, the, the, the I mean, basically the, the FBI was surveilling her uh, personal life. 1970s. I'm still legally married to her estranged husband. See, we went through a form of marriage. Algerian. I'm in Hassan. Hassan Hasni. Oh, she didn't. Okay, so she didn't delete herself. I know that she went through a whole bunch of shit with the way that she was treated. Uh, and then this guy happened to be abusive. Like it's messed up. But anyway, um, hold on, let me go back. Where's this at? Where's where's my uh, number five, restrict the ability to organize protests, for example, through agents promoting violence against police during planning and at protests. And this speaks right to the member Umbrella Man during the Minnesota protest that was smashing glass or many of the people talking about during the, the George Floyd Black Lives Matter protest where like pallets of bricks were just like left in the middle of the street or even furthermore, um, um, where was I at? Restrict uh, uh, Richard Aoki. Richard Aoki, who was the FBI informant underneath Larry Threadgill, who worked for the FBI, who basically got Richard Aoki, uh, who he actually self-deleted in, I believe, 2009. But anyway, got Richard Aoki to um, uh, basically arm the Black Panthers, to instigate armed conflict between the Black Panthers and the police to shift popular opinion against the Black Panthers, right? So now the Black Panthers, you know, they're cop killers, right? 
even though they're protecting themselves. Again, exercising their Second Amendment rights, walking into the state capitol, uh, you know, in California. And then Reagan came down with the Mulford Act, which basically said you couldn't open carry. That the, the whole premise of California's gun laws is racism. Six, restrict the ability of individuals to participate in group activities, for example, by character assassination. So, you know, if all else fails, just make some shit up. Just make some shit up about them and say that they're a pedophile or say that they're a woman beater or just make some shit up. Say that they desecrated some church, you know, whatever it is, false arrest and surveillance. This this is all like this is all document. This is all you know Freedom of Information Act. It's all out there. This is what was going. This is what was going on during the entire civil rights movement. And and to, to sit there and act like this has no bearance on where black people where black people are today is insane. Again, my father was born in American apartheid. My father could not go to the same schools. My father could not drink from the same water fountain. You know, what I mean, he he was he was, uh, you know, a damn near an adult, you know, when 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 shit, you know, when the law when the laws just changed on paper, just on paper. But that doesn't mean that that changed the hearts and minds of men. That doesn't mean that the banks, the bank, the, the freaking uh, right now. Hold on. Let me type this in. J.P. Morgan. Uh, uh, J.P. Morgan sued mortgages. So you got J.P. Morgan's getting sued. Because of discrimination with mortgages and you know charging people like uh, higher like higher rates and shit like that, or denying people black people who actually qualify. Uh, Wells Fargo, you know the same thing. So here's the argument: PrivateBank.com, JP Morgan, Doc, JP Morgan, Private Bank. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Where's this at? Where's this at? No, that's not what I'm looking for. Reuters. So JP Morgan agrees to 55 million dollar settlement mortgage discrimination complaint. Uh, J.P. Morgan settles mortgage uh, discrimination lawsuit. Uh, where is we at? Well, that's the 55. Uh, J.P. Morgan chased to pay 614 million for mortgage fraud. Where else? Are, where else are we at? Wells Fargo. This is all recent. Wells Fargo sued. Wells Fargo agrees to $3.7 billion settlement uh, with CFPB over consumer abuses. Is this how is this housing? Wells Fargo to pay 3.7 billion on a settlement. It's uh what did they do? Wrongfully seizes homes and cars. Wells Fargo. Hold on. Let me type in black people. African Americans. Uh, Wells Fargo is being sued for discriminating against black borrowers, uh, a black homeowner suing Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo to pay $175 million in settlement in discrimination lawsuit. Uh, a government probe found three, 34,000 cases in which the bank charged black and Hispanic customers higher fees and rates than white customers with similar credit. Uh, Bloomberg.com. Wells Fargo rejected half its black applicants in mortgage refinancing boom. Uh, bank will pay 31 million after discriminating against black and Latino. Whatever. I can't read this, the the rest of it because I'm just reading the 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 headlines on, you know, Google. But like all of this, you can't personal responsibility your way around this shit. You know, so, so, you know, and and, then, you know, to to speak on, you know, the behavior, you know, like, like people really got to like, why is it so important to keep a family intact? Why is it so important for uh, like, like you got all these like white supremacist groups and whatnot, which I think the left is stupid. The LGBT community, I've been meaning to say this, you all are stupid. With, with this shit that you're doing with the fucking the kids and the and and the transgender story time and all that shit because you're allowing the white supremacists the proud boys the fucking uh neo nazis the 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 patriot front and all that shit you're allowing them to get behind something that 
is it seems like it's virtuous and and worthy and, and, and a worthy cause. You're allowing them to get behind that because you won't leave the fucking children alone. And so now you got the white supremacist acting like, you know, they're getting behind a good cause, recruiting more people because, you know, anybody who 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 you know, like it it, do, it doesn't agree with the white supremacist part, but they're like, maybe these guys aren't that bad because they're actually trying to protect the children. Right. You see, like you all are stupid for that shit. You know, but um, I was about to say there was something about to, I was about to say about. Damn, what was I about to say about the shit? I just lost my train of thought. Damn it. Hold on a second. Okay, I remember where I was going with this. You know, it's like, you know, even with that, right? You got white people, they don't want their kids being affected by that. You know, what's funny is, how come they don't try to read story time in the black community? You know, uh, that's the funny part. But anyway, so you got these white people, LGBT community, they do the story time bullshit. And the white people are like, we don't want our kids to be affected by that shit. You see, like, like in other words, white people try to, to preserve shit because they know that when if you go in there and you bust up a family or you bust up a community, that shit has everlasting reverberating effects. But somehow when it comes to black people, the same doesn't apply. So it's like they ignore the fact, oh, well, that was done, you know, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Yeah. And it still has an effect because it hasn't been corrected. You know, white supremacy has continuously had its foot on black people's necks. Every time black people try to get up, every time black people try to, even when they went off and created their own communities, even when communities were segregated as fuck, white people were on their side of town, black people were on their side of town. Somehow, magically, the white people found a way to come over into the black side of town and burn it the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? You got all this shit with Dilbert and all this crap. Oh, we need to separate and all this other shit. But we already did that. We already had segregation. And white people still found a way to find their white asses in the black community and burn that motherfucker down. Or drive a highway through it. Didn't want us in their community. Already had racial housing covenants. Already wouldn't lend to black people. Redlined like a motherfucker. But yet somehow, some way, white people still ended over in the black section of town in front of somebody's house with some pitchforks and fucking torches. You know, but anyway, back to the point that I was going to make. I'm just saying, you know, that that whole long lasting effect. And this is why black people now are talking about reparations for slavery. But unfortunately, we got a lot of talking heads and shills like and, and coons like Candace Owens, who's not even an African American, not even a foundational Black American, talking this shit. And that's who they go up there and they always get, you know, to, to sit there and, and and absolve white people of white guilt and tell white people what they want to hear. And you know, white people will throw massive amounts of money at those people, right? Because they're like, look, ah, let's see, Candace for president. You know, just it's coon shit. You know, like I said. I don't have any problem with people talking about, you know, we need to do this and we need to do that. And the black community needs to be fixed and blah, 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 blah. And black people need to, you know, uh, uh, you know, act this way. And I'm like, I'm, I have no problem with a person saying that. As long as you follow it up with, yeah, we got to get those those black men gainfully employed. But see, they never follow it up with that. You know, it's just like this shit, even with the with the what the white boys and all their shit with the 63 percent of them being single. I'm like. I'm like, the only way you're turning this around is literally, it has to be a reversal of what was done, you know, over the last, like, you know, 50 years with feminism. You got to focus on the boys and you got to make the boys awesome to where the women want to. It, it, it serves no purpose to make women awesome because women only want to date men that are more awesome than them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like a, it's like an evolutionary fucking uh, uh, oxymoron. You know, it, it, it just doesn't work. I don't care how free women want to be. People can say I'm sexist, all this other shit. It doesn't fucking work. And as Amos Wilson pointed out, if you have young men that are that are that are unemployed and underemployed, you know, they're going to cannibalize the community. And it's only a matter of time before these white boys with no hope of a future. And, and you know, we won't talk about a group of people that were really sold the golden carrot and can't handle that shit. You better look at some white boys because they will burn this motherfucker down. You think you think you know, black teenagers joining gangs and shit like that, right? You think that's bad, right? They don't have the same level of entitlement 
that white kids have, that young white men have. They will. You, you thought January 6th was bad. Oh, no. Wait till you get to the freaking 25 year old who loves his AR-15 and he decides that he wants to have another January 6th. You know, what I mean, they ain't playing that shit on, on top of the fact that America has had w- wars for the last 20 years. So you you got a whole bunch of white boys that know how to use them things. You got a whole bunch of highly trained, you know, uh, uh, soldiers and veterans and shit. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I don't know what the white elites are doing. I'm like, you all are fucking retarded. You all are retarded, you know, but they may not care. They might be on some muhaha Illuminati, you know, Bilderberg group type of shit, you know, where they go out there and fucking, you know, do their little thing. And, and, and you're like, oh, we're globalist. We go out here. We don't care what goes on with any particular country. We'll just jump from country to country, you know, and our home base will be in Switzerland because they're isolationist and they control all the banking any goddamn way. Moo, ha, 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 ha. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, motherfuckers are stupid. It's just, it, it's, it's just, ugh. Like white supremacy, what like like seriously speaking, like if this if if this is white supremacy, black people black people should should really be re- reconsidering their idea of 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 white superiority because these motherfuckers are retarded. This is most certainly not how you maintain a position of 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 power. Like they're cutting their nose off despite their face. At least that's what I think. I'm like you're gonna implode this bitch, and you're not gonna have anything left. This is going to be fucking scorched earth and just it's just going to head towards a dystopian future and Mad Max and the road, road warrior shit, you know, or, or Fury Road and shit like that. And freaking Immortan Joe up there, you know, do not become addicted to water for you will regret it in its absence, you know, or resent it in its absence and then shut the water off and shit. That's what it's going to be like up in this bitch. Fucking retarded, just retarded. You know, but, uh, you know. I can keep having these talking points. I keep saying this. You know, I don't know whether I'm more mad at Candace Owens or the idiot white folks in her comment section. They're like, oh my God, this, this is the truth. Yeah, they don't want to hear the truth. Huh? Yeah, this is real. This is why you need CRT. All the shit that I just laid out, in the, most white people don't even know about that. I'm like, a Koei, Florida? They're like, a Koei who? Koei what? Huh, where's that? You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't know about what was actually done. They don't know about the specifics, the mechanics of how the black people, African-Americans were crippled. In their mind, you know, racism ended with the I have a dream speech. You know, uh, uh, everything was everything was was uh, was fair and even Steven by 1985. Racism was over. Run DMC and Aerosmith did their little song together. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie did their song together and Madonna and all these other people, right? You know, we are the world. We are the children. Right? All that shit, right? So racism was over by like, by like, by, it most certainly was over by, by, by 1991. And then obviously 1992 and the LA riots happened, right? But it was, it, it was over. It was over. And see, the problem is black people, they just can't get over it, right? They just can't get over, you know, the the the, the freaking, what would that be? You know, freaking 200 and, 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 and what is that, 255 years or something like that, right? Of, of, of fucking slavery and then like a, another 100 years of Jim Crow. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they they, they can't they can't get over that, right? And white people running around. 9-11, never forget. Pearl Harbor, never forget. <sighs> Being an African American is the most exhausting experience that God could ever give any human being. Period. It is the most tiring, exhausting, frustrating experience that anybody could have on this fucking planet you know to have to to have to deal with this type of and i'm saying it's not yeah oh you could be an african you could be a starving ethiopian or some shit like that right no it's 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 the psychological anguish the psychological shit that you have to go through the gaslighting that you have to deal with on a constant daily fucking basis the way that they try to bury the truth 
You know what I mean? CRT, they can talk all the shit they want. They don't, they don't want real American history to be taught. Uh, you know, all of you went to American schools. Everybody listening to this video went to American schools. You know, who the fuck was Medgar Evers? We didn't know. Malcolm X, oh, he was the bad guy. He was Magneto, and Martin Luther King was Professor Xavier, and he was the good guy because he was talking about everybody come together in Kumbaya. Yeah, if I was white supremacy, I wouldn't want to support Malcolm X. He talking about shooting two-legged dogs. He talking about anybody puts hands on you, you put hands on them back. Nah, nah, nah. Let's go talk about Martin Luther King. You know what I mean? Let's let's support him. Let's give him a holiday. You know, after he dies, because, you know, he was talking about, you know, economics. He realized that he integrated his people into a, a burning building, as he said. You know, like he said, you know, in that NBC special, you know, integrating the freaking, you know, lunch counters didn't help the black community. Oh, you know, you know, we, we had our own black businesses when this shit was segregated. Then we integrated, you know, some of us thinking the white man's ice is colder. You know what I mean? And all that did was enrich the white man. Because now we're eating in his diners. Now we don't even have our own diners. You know, shit like that. Aside from the, you know, the, the, the busting up the black community by running highways through it like they did Black Bottom and Central Ave in Tampa. And they got other communities all around the country, communities in North Carolina that they ran highways through. You like, damn. You know, because, you know, when when the 1955 Highway Commission Act took off, they weren't going to run them highways through white communities, established white communities. You know, what I mean, you can't even name a black community where it, like it's it, they, there's like this this, you know, uh, what do you want to call that? The. the the freaking community council, you know, this is this this building is historic and it cannot be changed in any way. And you must use original colors from 1776. You know what I mean? Like they don't have no shit like that. It's white people's neighborhoods that the highways went around. But where the black people lived? Oh, no, they ran that shit through there. And usually the only thing, you know, no, you know what the only thing that's usually standing in those ex black communities the, the old, you know, a Baptist Ebenezer church or some shit like that. They left the church standing to leave the church. But anything else, nah, nah, run, run highways through that bitch. And you'll see this even with the, you know, the building roads and they got to, you know, they're, 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 you know, doing the whole thing to build the road. And then they come across some unmarked graves and, and, and tombstones and shit and discover like, oh, shit, this was. A black African American cemetery. Yeah, because it was a community next door to that shit. You know, you can walk through woods, you know, all across America and and and, and run into these headstones that were previously black cemeteries. You know, shit is fucked up. You know, Candace is just like I said, like Candace. You know, there was a point in time where I would have given Candace, like when she went to the, you know, the 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 whatever what what was it. This this what was it the summit thing what was it uh what the sh what what is that shit that Diddy got I forget what the fuck it is but anyway whatever whatever BT summit or some shit that she went through and she was up there and saying certain things she came with a totally different engine but now that she's on the Daily Wire she's just coming with pure nonsense you know it's it's all that it's all that you know the intellectual dishonesty that gross intellectual dishonesty that 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 massive omitting. You know, of of certain details, certain details that white people really do need to know about. And it's like you got the platform to say it, but you got to remember who's paying her. They're paying her to spew this bullshit. They're not paying her to tell the truth. And it's one of the biggest problems with all this fucking media out here, all this mass media that we got out here, you know, because it's all I mean, I was watching some shit, you know, even with the Jewish community. You know what I mean? Like all this defamation league and, you know, the day of hate that they were talking about with the white supremacists and all that shit that the white, you know, the white supremacists were coming out. I'm like, I'm like, you know, they they, they like, I mean, they, they made it a point to say the Jewish community. You know what I mean? They were like, and, and, and other minorities. I'm like, black people are the number one victims of hate crimes in America. It's sitting right the consistently every year. It's right there on the FBI's web page you know 2019 black people top of the charts 2018 black people top of the charts 2017 black people top of the charts and when they come out with 2020 black people guaranteed gonna be at the top of the charts 
You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, you know, and, and that whole, you know, you know, when they bring up black people in crime and then, and it's the 1350 and all that other shit, right? Which again, makes sense when you have such a marginalized group, but I'm like, that works in both directions. How does, how does a, 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 the group that is only 13% of the population be, you know, over 50% of the victims of hate crimes? That means you got to go like like again, we don't even live in the same communities. So as a white supreme, you got you got to go out of your way to look for black people. It's not like you walk out your front door and you throw a rock and you hit a black person. White people don't even live around black people. Black people don't even live around white people. So in order for a hate crime to take place, they got to go out hunting and searching for black people. And we saw this with the brother that unfortunately got stabbed and died at Maryland waiting at the bus stop. We saw this with the with the black dude that was stabbed with a sword, the homeless black man that was stabbed with a sword by the white supremacist that drove all the way up from Maryland, I believe, to New York to, to commit a crime like that. You know, what I mean, we saw this with with, uh, you know, the, the AME church. You know, we saw this with, you know, the um, uh, 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 the, the Buffalo shooter. Like, motherfucker, you live in Binghamton. You, I think that's what it's called. You drove all the way up to freaking Buffalo to commit this crime. You know what I mean? Like, they got to go out of... This is what I'm talking about. They go out of their way. You know, where like a, like a white... Like a black person, you walk out your front door... You know, or not, you, not walk out your front door, but I'm saying, you know, you go about your daily life, whether you go to the store or whatever, and you're going to run into white people. You know, because they're 75 percent of the population, but they they them being the majority, they got to go out and seek you out. They got to go and find you in order for those numbers to look like they do with you being 13 percent of the population. They are 50 percent of the offenders, the perpetrators of hate crimes, 50 percent. You know, but uh, anyway, I'm I'm done with this video. I'm just I'm just I wasn't even gonna make this video. I just I, I you know seeing that seeing I I can't I can't do intellectual dishonesty. Y'all know me. I cannot do. I don't I don't care. You people want to say some. You back it up. All that other shit. But when people are out here and they're kind of like intellectually finessing and leaving shit out and, and and not only that shit that they've already been corrected on to sit there and talk about oh black the black family structure and everything i'm like bitch you already got checked by fucking cornell west talking about money and resources when she sat up there with her stupid ass talking about her cousin got a raise working at starbucks and he was like how much of a raise how much of a raise? And he put and he put his fingers together like 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 you know recognizing it was a small fucking amount. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just up there talk. I, I'm so sick of these people, these these conservatives talking about the type of America they want to see, and they don't want to get on the asses of people that don't want to pay anybody. They don't want to talk about men being gainfully employed, but they want to go back to the 1950s when there were fucking unions and full medical and dental and time and a half and double time on Sunday and all this other shit and, and pensions and everything else. They want to go back to that time without men having those type of resources in their pocket. Like, bitch, fuck you. Seriously, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And all the, the, the fucking conservatives out here that are talking this shit. I don't mind you up there talking about Jesus and intact families and, and, and all the shit that you want to pull out of the Bible. I don't give a fuck. But you're not going to sit up there here and, and, and say that or expect to get that type of that type of outcome without a, a serious financial investment in young men. I don't care what the race is. It's not going to happen. And y'all about to find out real quick, it ain't going to happen in the white community either. You can try as you may. You can go up there and talk all this. Sh See, it's about mindset and it's about personal responsibility. Y'all can personal responsibility all you fucking want. You know what I'm saying? You know, e even 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 the, 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 the fucking, you know, the, 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 the bigoted individuals like Undead Chronic already told you what time it was on that shit when he addressed Dave Ramsey. He already told you what time it is on that. You know, it's just, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. This country's going to hell in a fucking handbasket. 
you know, um, you know, who knows what the, what what the outcome is going to be? It's going to be negative. I, I keep telling y'all, it's going to get worse. You know, you better get your CCW. You get your get your permit because you got to worry about multiple things. You got to worry the, the economy being what it is. You got to worry, and, and then and the fact that they don't want to correct it. You're gonna have to. You gotta worry about ops. You gotta worry about fucking criminals, carjackers, all that shit, because they're gonna try to get it however they can get it. And then you gotta worry about the fucking white supremacists running around. You know, motherfuckers feeling froggy and shit. You know what I mean? Thinking it's their opportunity to start a race war or some shit. Because since life is not working out for them, you know, it's everybody else's fault. It's the blacks. It's the Jews. It's the Syrian refugees. It's the Afghanis. It's the Mexicans coming across. It's everybody's fault but them. Even though they're the ones that are in, you know, we conquered this bitch. White supremacy. We run this hoe. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, all right, you run this hoe. And so... The reason why manufacturing went overseas is because your people made a decision to make that happen. The reason why, you know, your 401k went in the toilet back in 2009 is because the people who look like you decided to make that happen. You know, the reason why you don't you're unemployed or underemployed or you can't afford the house is because the people who look like you decided to make that happen. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you direct the energy in the in the direction in which it needs to go but no nah, they never do that they never do that somehow it's 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 the man at the bottom of the totem pole oh you know see it's, it's, it's the niggers they breathing up all the white man's air that's what the problem is they're always with this bullshit and i'm like and i'm like you got millionaires and billionaires running around fuck i'll give tucker carlson some credit you know what I mean? Because he made a video, but I know people are going to be like, it's the Jews! Because it was because the guy that did it you know, was a Jewish guy, but when he did that video about Cabela's out there in some town in the Midwest and shit like that, and, you know, the, the guy, like, did some, you know, some, uh, you know, Wall Street finesse and 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 basically, you know, uh, collapsed the business and made billions off of the shit, and you had all these white people that were now out of a job. They've been doing that shit forever. Not just Jewish people and, you know, Michael Bloomberg and the like, but other white men have been doing that shit. You know what I mean? White Jewish people only make up like, what, like, like 4% of the U.S. population. You, and, but they got no, they only got smoke for Jewish people. They don't have any smoke for the white people who look like them that do the exact same thing. You know, it's just, it's, it's just... Sometimes I, I swear, I like, I hate this country sometimes. Like it just, it's just, you know, it's just people, man. It's just, you can't, you, you, you put, you put the information right fucking in front of them and they're like, like, they're just retarded with the shit. I'm like, you can read the shit. The shit is right in front of you. All the stuff, all the receipts, you know what I'm saying? And when you look at the FBI stuff, I mean, yeah, this shit is redacted. You know what I mean? But you can see that these are legitimate, you know, 1968 FBI documents and shit like that. And you can literally, I mean, the, 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 they got to they gotta just explain and describe, you know, the purpose, why they're doing what they're doing, right? Because you got to remember, all this shit is paid for by taxpayers, even black people. So black people's own taxpaying money went into undermining the organizations designed to empower them. This is why we're talking about reparations, y'all. Anyway, that's all I got to say. That's my video. SWP out. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe.